Melanie. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to make your first quilt. Super excited about this little series where I think we're going to do four videos, but we'll see. This will be video number one, and we are going to make your first quilt together. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like patchwork made with a charm pack. Okay, so we're going to take one of those daunting steps right out of your first quilt and use a pre cut. That will allow us to just get right to sewing. So that's what we're gonna do for this first video. We're gonna get this top sewn together. Your first quilt, it's gonna be super fun. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to baste it and quilt it and bind it and all that good stuff. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through really slow. So this is gonna be a series meant for those of you that have always wanted to learn how to make a quilt. And so this is gonna be like absolute beginner. I'm gonna go super, super slow. I also wanted to tell you guys about my five days to better quilting free mini class. So this is a little mini class I've offered for a long time, but in case you haven't seen it, it's called five days to better quilting. So that's the number five days quilting.com. And I, I've had this available for a while. I just went back in and made sure that all the videos are working and all the emails that look good. It has so much information and I still regularly get emails from people letting me know how much they enjoyed the little class and and how much they learned from it. So if you're a beginner quilter, that is also a great resource for you guys. I have lots of like the list of good fabric manufacturers and tools that you might want to invest in and all kinds of things. So definitely check that out. Again, five, the number five days quilting.com. But let's jump right in. I've got a nice beginner tutorial for you. Let's make your first quilt. Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be how to make your very first quilt. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and my biggest recommendation when you're making your very first quilt is to start with the charm pack. So we are gonna be making a basic patchwork small quilt, nothing too unmanageable. So I want you to find a charm pack and charm packs are five inch squares and they're already pre-cut for you in the entire line of fabric. So there's lots of them to choose from. I'm gonna actually be using this one from the fabric line Catterday, so that's what it's gonna look like. But any other charm pack that you would like to use, pick one out. They should have about 42 pieces in there. They're all about the same size. So find one of these, and then we will head over to the sewing machine. So actually, before we head to the sewing machine, we wanna do our layout. So we wanna take this apart, and find a dining table, a floor, a clean surface of some, of some kind to lay out your fabric. So play around with your layout, and as long as you have 42 squares in your charm pack, I want you to arrange it so that you have six squares across and seven squares going down. So go ahead and get your layout figured out, and then we're gonna organize everything and head over to the sewing machine. The great thing about the charm packs is that they're pre-cut for you, so that takes a whole step out. So when you're very first getting into quilting, it's a great start. Okay, so here's my layout. I just did this on the floor of my sewing room. So you don't need anything super fancy. Now I'm gonna show you how to organize your stacks of fabric. That way you can take everything over to the sewing machine and you won't have to keep getting up and down. The first thing that you wanna do though is take a picture because inevitably my cat comes along and knocks over a stack or something happens and this way you'll just have a backup plan so that you can refer to it in case you need to. This also helps you sort of determine if you wanna change anything in your placement. For example, you know, I'm okay with this but this is a little bit of a solid block down here. I maybe would wanna move some things around so you can kind of check it out that way. All right, so this is how I like to organize my stacks. And if you find a different way of doing it that works better for you, feel free to do that instead. So what I like to do is take two columns at a time. So I place right sides together. So right sides on top of the right side. And then I stack from the top going down. So then I will know that I need to sew along this right edge and that this is the top fabric of columns one and two. So then what I'll do is I'll go and do the same thing on the other four columns. 
and I'll stack them and label them. That way we can head to the sewing machine and not have to worry about getting things misplaced. We don't have to get up and down. Everything is there. We could just zoom through and get everything sewn. All right, now here we go. We've got our three stacks. I labeled them, column one and two, three and four, five and six. So we're gonna put three, four, five and six aside for now. And here's column one and two. Now I'm gonna teach you a technique called chain piecing and this is a lifesaver when it comes to quilting. And it makes it go really fast, very efficient. You don't use up too much thread, so it's great. You can use a thread that is whatever you like I use R fill and I like a kind of soft dove gray like this, especially when I'm using lots of different colors from my um, fabric line. So if you're using all very light colors, you could use white or all very dark colors, just something that coordinates with everything. So the way chain piecing works is you're going to grab your first two pieces of fabric. Remember everything is, should be the right direction. We know we need to sew down the right side. We are gonna line up our edges and we're gonna measure our quarter inch seam. So everything with quilting is quarter inch seam allowance. And we're gonna measure that from the edge of our fabric. So if you have a pinked edge, this little zigzag edge is called a pinked edge. And if you have that, we're gonna measure that quarter inch from the outside of that, not from the inside of that zigzag. So I'm gonna place this underneath my presser foot. Don't worry, I will get a close up. And I'm going to use a piecing foot, but many of you as a beginner quilter may not have a piecing foot for your sewing machine. And a piecing foot just means that it's a, already a perfect quarter inch. So I'm gonna show you how to use your plates that comes on your sewing machine. So right down here on this plate, this says one dash four. It's right there. You'll see it on your machine. And I'm gonna line up my edges with that line. So there's no need to backstitch with piecing quilting. And then we will sew that through. Now, don't cut your threads. We're just gonna press on that presser foot and get a few extra stitches. And then we're gonna grab the next two fabrics from our pile. Line up those edges, lift up that presser foot, and then we are gonna continue sewing. Now, occasionally pre-cuts are not cut perfectly, and so that's okay. We are gonna kind of watch out for that in our next step. But if you see some edges that aren't quite lining up, don't stress out. And you're gonna just keep doing this chain piecing with all of your fabrics until you get to the end of your two columns. And I'll meet you there. All right, I've just finished my last one. Now we can lift up our presser foot, take it off the machine and use your thread cutter or whatever you have to cut that thread. So now I have one of these little guys that helps me cut everything, but just regular old scissors will work just fine. So I'm gonna go through and just remember that you need to keep the, the last one you did is one that goes on the bottom because the top the first fabric you've fed through the machine was from the top of the quilt. So as we go down, that way we can stay nice and organized. And you always know that the seam is on the right hand side in case you got confused. So here is my stack and I'm going to put my label back on there just in case. And you know, sometimes I even like to pin it because my little cat Jack, he's a little feisty one sometimes. So I'm going to put this aside. And now I'm gonna follow that exact same method for the remaining stacks of fabric that I have. And of course, if you wanted to use two charm packs or three charm packs and make a nice big quilt, totally fine. I'm just encouraging you to keep it small for your beginning of quilting journey. So go ahead and finish row three and four, or column three and four, excuse me, and column five and six, and then we will get to our rows. All right, so now we have all three piles done and ready to go, and now we can start putting our rows together. And the cool thing about this method is that you don't even need to get up from your sewing machine. We can just stay put right here. Sorry if you hear that piano in the background. My son is practicing. <laughs> so we have the top stack. Okay, so here's our top stack. We're gonna move that over here. And we have our next one, and then we have our third. Okay, so while we're sitting here, just go ahead and create these rows. So I'm gonna leave 
The third one here, I'm going to place my right sides together from the first set and the second set. And then we will send this through the machine. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that one. I'm going to open it back up and then I'm going to add the set from the third stack to the end. Right sides together, line up those edges and send that through the machine. So now we've got call row one, not column one. What row one complete? So what I do is I just set this aside. I, my work table is right behind me. So I put this on my work table and that is the top one from the quilt, right? So then, and we're gonna work our way down. So then the top of that stack that I'm making of all the rows will be from the bottom of the quilt. So all that to say, just keep track of which is the top one, which is the bottom one. And if you need to refer to your photo, totally fine. So now I'll take the next ones. So now sew all of these together and keep doing that until you have all seven of your rows complete. All right, so here we have all of our rows now are complete with our bottom row here on the top. So just keep track of that. So what we need to do now is we're gonna put our rows together. So we're gonna have the bottom row here and then we need the next row. And then I'm just gonna stack the rest of these up and out of the way. Okay, so we want all of the seams from the bottom row going in one direction, which, whether that's the left or to the right, doesn't matter. You can do this at the ironing board if that helps you, but I wanna show you how, you know, I feel like as a beginner, there's so many steps to quilting, so I'm trying to minimize the steps and, and um, have you feel confident about what you're doing. So all of the seams need to be facing, let's say to the left. Okay, so that means this seam underneath where our connections are, they need to be to the left. And so you can just do a little finger press. Just kind of gently run your fingers along those seams. And I wanna just kind of teach you this concept. This is called nesting your seams. And then what happens is the next row up here, all of these are gonna be facing to the right. Okay, so I'm going to finger press these as well to the right. And what that does when the bottom is to the left and the top is to the right, you have the seams lock into place when you sew them together. And that makes it so that you get those nice, perfect corners, those perfect little patchwork corners. Okay, so we did a little finger press. You can do this at the ironing board if you want, but I don't, I just sit at my machine and do it our seams going opposite directions. And that's good, we like that because that seam will lock, that seam will lock into place and you'll get that nice perfect corner. So what I recommend for beginners is pin all of these intersections until you get the hang of it. So I've got those seams nice and locked together. So I'm gonna add a pin and then I'm gonna go down and same thing, I'm gonna kind of wiggle, you can kind of wiggle it in your fingers and feel that seam, like their butt right up next to each other. We'll slide a little pin in there. And then go to the next one. So now that that's done, we can send this through the sewing machine. When you get close to the seam going through the needle, Take your pin out and hold your fingers right where it was and slowly send it through. Don't run over those pins with your sewing machine. Don't want anybody sending a broken needle into their eyeball. Sometimes as you run it through, the underneath seam kind of flips back toward yourself. So just make sure everything's laying flat
All right, let's see how we did. So that's how you want your points to look. And that is what nesting the seam does. Helps you get those nice corners. And if you did not get that nice corner, that is okay. Please do not rip it out as long as your stitch is good and your fabric is connecting, keep going. Because there's nothing worse as a beginner than have, feeling discouraged and having to rip all your stuff out. No one will notice in the end, I promise. So um, now what you'll do is same idea. So if all of these from the top row, the seams are facing to the right, so that means our next row, the seams are gonna be the opposite direction so we can lock in those seams together and nest them to make sure we get those nice points. And that's all there is to it to continue putting your entire quilt top together. So once your quilt top is sewn, all completely sewn, I'll meet you at the ironing board and that is when we're gonna give this a nice good press. All right, so here's our little quilt top ready to be pressed. I've got my iron on. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip it over to the back and we're gonna give it a nice good press. The two things, there's two ways of doing this. You can iron your seam open, which basically would mean to split this open like so, and you would iron along there. I don't think it's necessary when we just have these standard seams. When you get to more complicated things like stars where you have a lot of fabric kind of bulking up these seams, then I think that's a great way of doing it, but I'm gonna do it to one side. It's also a little faster than ironing it open, but there is two ways of doing it, so I do want you to be aware of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna press it down, and I'm gonna press down all of these seams as well. And when you press in quilting, you wanna press and lift, press and lift. We don't wanna run the iron along the fabric and distort anything. And we also don't want to use steam. So a dry iron is usually better. A little steam is okay if you need it, if it's super wrinkled. So I'm going to press the seam down and I'm going to do that for all those row seams. And as I'm moving it along, I'm lifting it slightly. Hold it in place, lift slight, I'm lifting it up and then I'm pressing it back down. That way we'll have nice pressed seams and we can go to our next step. But um, once you do that, you'll have this adorable little quilt top that we literally made so fast. I mean, look how easy that was, right? I hope you felt like it was easy. All right, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this video. I'm so excited for you guys. Let me know how it's going. If you're a beginner quilter, let me know if you have any questions. Did I leave something out? Are you unsure about something? Um, I would love to know and love to be able to help you out. So leave comments down below. All of the fabric that I use, different resources, great blog posts that might be helpful, all of that can be found in the description box below the video. So this is gonna be video number one. I will also, once those videos come out, I will have down below linked videos two, three, and four for your basting, quilting, and binding. So all of that will be available for you guys as well. So stay tuned for video number two and let me know how your first quilt goes. Tag me on social media, send me photos. I love to see what you all are working on and I love to see how you take my projects and make them your own. I, like I wanna see what charm pack did you pick out? What was speaking to you at the fabric store or on those photos as you were looking at them online? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.